Everyone, welcome to another edition of Independent Artists Unite Song Series. Today, I'm super psyched. Back for a second visit to the show, Chris from Dive Feetin. Welcome, Chris. Well, thanks for having me back, Scott. And and today we're going to talk about the attaché. Ah, yes. And when we last left our hero, there, there, is this a, this is a continuation of the story? Oh, right? yeah, it's totally. It's, okay. it's, it's definitely a continuation of all these problems he was having in the Rockford Files. Because as we know, the Rockford Files starts off with him being so psyched to be home. And then everything just starts going downhill for him. And, and, uh, and his, the attache. Okay, yeah. The attache starts off with him uh, just noticing that someone he does not like who has uh, wronged him in the past is uh, just milling, flitting about uh, socializing at the party he's at or the bar he's at. And uh, he's just talking to himself about how much he does not like this person. And is this an international setting as well or is he back um he's, he's still in dc at this point he's still in dc okay. um i just put it in french because i started off with saying uh raconteur bon vivant and i was like you know what let's just screw it i'm just gonna go and go for it i use all my terrible french skills that i have at my disposal i have <laughs> i have watched and heard Serge Gainsbourg sing it, sing in English. So I feel no, uh, yeah, exactly. you know, any sort of shame about uh, uh, making a mistake in French anymore. No, and, I, when, and, and it sets the stage that this is an international espionage oh yeah, he's thing. An international that's unfolded. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he's an international dude for sure. <laughs> and so uh, basically, this is one of the songs where I actually I did pull from my life because I was at like a bar recently and I was thinking about I saw somebody I didn't like. And I'm like, and he was being a dick. And, you know, these things happen. You got to like let this stuff go. But for me, part of letting it go was writing a song about it. I, I took it's not just this one person. It's a bunch of them. I took like all these dicks who I've had to deal with in my life. And I made I made a Voltron out of dicks. Ah, so I mean, a whole big dick bolster, and that's the attache. Oh, okay. so yeah, take that for what you will. I, I, anyway, that's that's it right there. And uh, <laughs> that song came together in like two days. That this is a pattern for you. You get the good, the, the good ones come together quick like that. Yeah, I mean, it does. Everything comes together, like recording it like that most of the music comes off just like that but my workflow with recording music perfect however vocals you know this that's where everything goes i don't know about you maybe maybe you, you're better than i am about this but vocals everything just goes to hell and it's <laughs> like you're sitting there trying to get the best take possible because mm. you hear your own voice and you don't yeah. like it you don't like it one bit <laughs> well i'm thrilled that the one line made it through I'm sorry to say. <laughs> oh yeah, no that that was like that was take fifty. I I went through fifty takes of that one. What what's the line after the? Da -da 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 uh, like, the oh, and yeah, like, I'm sorry to report the rumors report. are about you. Oh yeah, that's it. I'm sorry to report the rumors are about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I went with a sort of Western twang there. That's a great line. That's a great line. I wanted to Americanize that up a little bit when I get my American voice. Just like it sounds better when I get a little bit of a, a slight drawl. A slight drawl, not much, not off-putting. <laughs> and we we said last time, you, you have this international thing in your life because you were actually born in Germany. Is that right? right? No, no, I was born here in D.C. Are you born here in D.C.? Yeah. Who's from Germany? Someone was from Germany. Oh, my mom is. My Your mom's, mom's from Germany. Germany. Okay. I'm also so German, my dad's American, so okay. I, I, I had, I've got sent over there quite a bit, uh, and so I got a chance to, you know, see things there. See internet, you got to witness international espionage up close in person. I wish, I wish. Uh, my, my closest brushes with international espionage were James Bond films. <laughs> as far as you know, because that's the the element of espionage, important oh. element. Possibly, I had some neighbors I wondered about, but uh, I, I don't know this. <laughs> don't know the stories. And um, was uh, is your partner in crime involved in this one as well? Yes, I uh, I sent him a demo of this. I said like I want to do record this thing. You have time, and he listened to the thing. Like I could be over there this afternoon. I'll throw down my baseline. 
And so that was like third take. He got that thing. Third take. Boom. And uh, yeah, we just, we got the sound he liked and we stuck with that. And uh, we're very proud of this song because it just was, yeah. as far as uh, recording the music goes, so easy. It's absolutely easy. I mean, the guitar parts, you know, that you heard that. That's that's simple. That that was like one first take on each one of those. Well, I feel like those first takes is where the magic is. Mm. It, it, there's a certain passion and edginess, maybe a little nerves in in oh, there yeah. that uh, that come out, and it sounds so much like a live band. Like I've said before, you 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 guys are really great Cute. at capturing capturing that energy. We are looking for a drummer right now to do the live performances. Oh, exciting. Yeah, we don't have any. Uh, we have a couple people in mind. Uh, we've asked them, and hopefully they'll say yes to at least a couple of shows with us. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Darn. So it's, it's I wish it was. I wish it would be happening uh, while I'm over here. I would love to see that. How long are you here for? I'm, I'm here until April 30th. Oh, wow. If, if they say and you're yes, in New York quickly. City right now? <laughs> Actually, right now I'm in Delaware. I'm in Wilmington, Delaware. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm Delaware. actually, Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I'm thinking about going Wilmington to see Renee. Uh, Bethany? Uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Yeah. I was at, I was at my friend, uh, my college friend, uh, uh, Drew's farm. Hi Drew. Thank you. And now I'm at my high school friend, Stacy. So I've been going back in time since I've been here. I started right. with people that I'm like, really uh, associate with now and then i went to uh college and then like um now i'm to uh high school so right it's interesting it's, yeah. i'm doing some so reverse I'll, time travel 30th you go here like uh just to do uh the paperwork stuff and and such well i'm here Taxes filed yeah i'm here on some international espionage actually <laughs> Oh, do tell, do no, tell over I, Zoom. I, I, well, <laughs> it's uh, I, I've 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 reached a uh, transition phase in uh, my last relationship, and we just needed a big. Oh, we needed an international timeout, which is I'm that's sorry. when you when you really need a timeout, go international. But it's been very effective and beneficial for everyone involved okay so 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 that's that's been a good thing and um you know i'm also uh working on my master's thesis i went i went back to school there in denmark and um i need to finish up this master's thesis and then i applied to a phd program too so we'll see if that if that comes through but oh, right I'd, on. I, i'd love to go back to denmark with a finished thesis and acceptance into a phd program that would be that would be my 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 the total vision okay yeah, that's what i'm manifesting where you apply to <laughs> um for the phd yeah this is at oldborg university um in denmark for a um a uh, a music therapy phd Actually, right. I don't know if you've seen the videos. Uh, I've done some uh, music projects with uh, this kid that has cerebral palsy. I saw one of those videos. Yes. Yeah. And this is so this would be um, working with like 10 to 15 kids with cerebral palsy. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And, and, and just um, kind of the process and meaning behind songwriting for these kids as like a success experience and therapeutic experience for them, you know, kind of emotionally, socially, physically as well, you know. Um, so that's the idea. I'm all for that. Yeah, it, it's a cool, it's a cool project. I hope, I hope that it, that it turns out. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. And you got an um, album coming out in June, right? Wow. That's a good, that's a good memory, but I think i now no, I just heard, I, I, I watched that interview that just dropped earlier. This oh, morning. oh, thanks. Oh, well, thanks for watching. Yeah, ju uh, July, I think I'm, it's going to be. Right on. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I I had done some um, uh, collabs collaborations, 
Um, and so there's a, like a few collaborations coming out and then boom, the album. But new Ooh. single coming out this coming Friday. Oh, wow. You really yeah. put them out quick. Yeah. Yeah, this is maybe a little bit too close together, but that's just what happens. How, yeah, we how, got... how, how close are yours together? What's uh, a month. We're, a month. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's we about what we sent... That's what we're Yeah, about. I didn't actually think that the attache would catch on. Uh, it's it's my for us it caught on better than it usually does so we're, we're oh, proud really? of it oh, yeah good yeah and thank you thank you for your support i appreciate that uh but the g is silent it's coming out on the 16th and that's another uh continuation of the story because oh. he's in bern switzerland ah he's in bern switzerland and he's at the embassy there uh and that's uh, a little bit of code there because one thing i do know is that uh uh, but, you know, the embassy is obviously a cush job, but all the actions in Geneva. So that's sort of telling you that he's, you know, not, they don't think he's ready for that yet. So they said okay. the Baron. And uh, at this, it's, it's basically an epic tale of wine, cheese, petty revenge, and off season getaways. And uh, <laughs> he's he, so he's not there during ski season. It's just he's, he's not, mountains, mountains, as he says, mountains of the, grass. Uh, one of the uh, one of the, my favorite lines from that is, uh, "You'd think I'd fit in with all this baggage that I bring, but they can tell I can only afford to be here in the spring, uh, because you know it's off season. You know. But it's still very nice there. So you know, if you like walking through the mountains, that's a perfect time to do it. Just go in the spring, summertime, enjoy the mountains, enjoy the the green grass, and uh, you know get a cut rate on a hotel room. Yeah." And try out the sound of music spin on oh, top of a mountain. You have to. You absolutely have to. If you're in the Alps, you must do that at least once. <laughs> and um, do you have the lyrics hand handy for the attaché? Just so we can really, because I I researched on Bandcamp. You don't have them up there either, do you? Oh no, I don't. Would you like me to read them out? I would because I really want to follow the uh, uh, the story. This is a selfish uh, as a fan. Okay, uh, his, uh, here we go. Raconteur, bon vivant, belle du jour, moins de trente. So basically, uh, he's like, storyteller, good living, woman on his arm, you know, the beauty of the day, she's less than 30. Uh, L'homme d'état, you know, like, statesman, eminence grise, uh, you know, th the guy behind the throne. Mm. Uh, salopard, complete cali. Uh, salopard, obviously bastard. And uh, complete Kai, uh, that's a uh, complete rot. <laughs> and uh, so then we go into the stuff that's in English, which uh, speak for itself. Like I've been trying to duck him. I know the rumors are true and I'm sad to report the rumors are about you. It sounds weird. Just let me tell you something. Lyrics, universally awful, but you got to go play them up, especially when you recite them. Yeah. Because, but uh, I'm having a good time with this one. <laughs> So, uh, on chassa et va a hunter has come to uh, play. Here comes the attache. Forget everything that you know. That's the uh, oublie tout ce que vous savez. Uh, voici le prix élevé. Here's the uh, high behold the high price de son amitié of his friendship. And the second verse is uh, votre deuxième leçon la même que la première. That's uh, your second lesson, the same as the first. I'll be I'll be admit that's uh. I'll admit this. I got really lazy with that one there. I, I got that was that was the, I got really lazy with that one. What am I gonna say? Like, well, you know, what can you say that that you didn't say just as good the first time? So I, I put that in there. And uh <laughs> basically everything gets repeated again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is why it took two days. <laughs> Most of that was doing vocals. <laughs> And is there is there any chance of like a long form video? It could almost be a short film of of this guy. I would like together. to do that. I don't want to play him though. I I, I do identify okay. with him, but uh, I want to find someone who else who can uh, who can play him. And I'll just like maybe I could be the attaché because I really I think I could play that dude. Mm. I think I could really play the the heck out of that dude. Damn. Yeah, well. well. I'd like I'd like to audition. Okay. Yeah. 
how, like, I, don't, I don't know if we can get this done in April before April because I'm gonna be like <laughs> visiting my mom for a while. <laughs> well, you can write a whole thing. Get those taxes days. done. I, I haven't done my taxes yet. Just so you know, uh, as we're doing this, it is uh, the sixth of April, and I have uh, nine days to do my taxes. So okay. Yeah, and in De Denmark, they don't give you any chance. They just do them for you. Oh my God, that sounds yeah. nice. Yeah. You owe this much. That's that's. <laughs> but you. See, but it's a lot. Really like every year, the government says like it's time for paperwork. <laughs> So that's it there. So uh, what else is happening? Um, oh, yeah. Um, Dick Thunder says hello. He really liked the last interview. And we actually did wheel him out. He, I actually had to go and do some promos with him, a couple of them. So Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if we'll ever get Dick Thunder on here. Pardon me? I was wondering he's, if we'd ever get Dick around. Thunder. He actually has work today. He's, getting, he's okay. like in transit. Because he could wear a back. mask. Or, or does he always wear a mask? He does. Or, He's a little bit shy. He also has coworkers who are nosy, so okay. he wants to be. Uh, well, he can wear a mask on the show if he wants, and maybe you guys probably have a voice altering software of some kind. Oh, I can, we, actually, I think I have like a, a Darth Vader voice changer somewhere. We can just hook that up to him. He can like talk <laughs> with the Darth Vader voice. That actually sounds great. pretty. I, yeah. I think that's actually sounds really great. I, I'll suggest that to him. <laughs> He'd love I would love that. I would love that. And so I'm I, I take it that at work he is not known as Dick Thunder. Oh no, no. He, he's he's uh <laughs> I I can tell it. he's not known as that. Basically he got that name because he came and he was hanging out and he, and he said, like, you know, I'm thinking about you remember that director, Richard Donner? Like, yeah. Why did he go as Dick Thunder? That's a much better name. I'm like, yeah, mm. you're right. And so then, then he decided, he's like, I'm going to, when he did the band, he's like, I'm going to do Dick Thunder. I'm like, okay, damn, that's a good name. I wish speaking, of, speaking of Richard Donner, do you know that like when he was dying, he mel made Mel Gibson promise, you got to do Lethal Weapon 5. Oh, really? So they're doing Lethal Weapon 5, yeah. Mel Gibson. It's cool for the shit. <laughs> a line that I'm sure they'll use again. <laughs> We're all too old for this shit. Yeah, and you know, it turns out he was only forty-one when he said that, Danny Glover. Oh my God, why, why, I, why I'm filled with Lethal Weapon trivia? I it's don't know. a good movie. Yeah. Lethal, I, I will go on the record. Lethal Weapon one and two, maybe three. Darn good movies. They hold up. Yeah, I, I, I like Lethal Weapon one because I really thought actually that Mel Gibson's character was a a good character. His kind of, you know suicidal yeah cop. yeah the suicidal cop thing and then i think that was a good it was like a new thing right i guess the that's been no, ripped that off before. quite a bit now yeah but i think that was a new thing i think he did a good job and uh but it became of course cartoonish as it went on well yeah joe pesci was really where things uh went down, you know started to get more cartoonish but he's still good you know joe pesci he sold his house uh a while ago his place in new jersey and uh, I went looking through the the pictures of it, and uh, I made a joke about like I bet there's a go fishing gone fishing poster somewhere, and I found it. He actually had on his wall the gone fishing poster, like in the corner somewhere. I was like, yes. You ever see that one? Him and Danny Glover going fishing. <laughs> a movie so bad, like the one person who saw it walked out feeling like completely uh, ripped off. You ever saw Gone Fishing? Don't no, people, so. people out there do not go see Gone Fishing. Don't, don't. It's like but now I have a start. macabre curiosity. It, it, well, it's uh, there's, <laughs> it's about two people going fishing. That's that's all you need to know, and uh, it doesn't get any better from there. You know, I have a friend who was uh, who's who's an actor and director in L.A., and he was in um, Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. No kidding. With Joe Pesci. Yeah. You know, the uh, the mob guys that were searching for Joe Pesci the whole time, okay. one, one of them has a uh, shaved head, big guy. That, that's my friend, Joe Basile. Yeah. And he said uh, he did not have anything nice to say about Joe Pesci. It was kind of, it was kind of a, a letdown. Really? I think Joe Pesci would be 
fun to hang out with and do a movie with, but apparently not. Well, a lot of celebrities are like that. So, you know, like, they don't come off well. And I'll tell you something. I only have one celebrity that I have personal beef with. Mm. And, I mean, this goes back decades. I mean, personal. And that's personal. Kid Rock. All right. Because I was working, like, twenty over 22 years ago, I was working as a janitor somewhere. And he comes into the place where I work. And he has two ladies next to him. Both, like, uh, you know, they've been uh, enhanced. And uh, he's wearing like his uh, big old, he, he, like you know, like the big fur coat, and he's got the hat on. I'm like, oh. I'm just trying to get through my day, and like, it's I just want to, I just want to have a time out. And he, of course, he picks these women that have been enhanced, and yet Kid Rock himself, you know, that obviously many enhancements that could be done, but he's good to go, just the way hey, he is. <laughs> he, he's got a look. He sticks with it. And anyway, he comes to my work and I'm like, I'm having a bad day. I'm already having a bad day. It's the worst day ever. I'm a janitor. I'm working at this place and you can figure it out. Read between the lines, people. And uh, he comes in and he looks at me pushing the mop and he just like, he points at me, just whispers into one of the ladies' ears and they all start giggling together. And I'm like, man, uh... fuck you. Fuck you, Kid Rock. No, that's okay. But I'm like, I, like that's when I was like, you know what? I I had nothing against Kid Rock, but I didn't like him. But now I'm like, oh, we got personal beef. And mm -hmm. then like years later, I'm in Vegas. Becky and I went to go see Motley Crue. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. I actually went to see Motley Crue in the, their Vegas residency. Oh, okay. great show! I've Absolutely also incredible. I've also seen Motley Crue. So yeah, great show. Anyway, theater uh, pain tour. The next day, we're just sitting out there, uh, trying nursing our hangovers trying to like uh at the hard rock trying to just enjoy our uh our our dinner and uh there's this right on the other side of the pool there's this uh stage set up and there's someone sound checking and becky and trying to have a conversation and every single time one of us opens our mouth they start that that i am the bull god bow with the bow song and like it like he interrupts us like this is the second time in my life kid rock has personally fucked with my day personally and uh, so he's on strike two with me. If he ever, like, you know, we'll have words. <clears throat> I'd like to see you versus. Uh, oh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to tell him, man, why you do this? You how you come in my life three times and just like screw with my day. That's not nice. Yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like you are energetically connected to Kid Rock in some way. That's uh, which is also. I scary. don't think we're like uh, a, a dyad, like in uh, the the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> go force heal Kid Rock, and we're gonna like make peace. <laughs> <laughs> and then he puts his hand on me, and then somehow I'm pregnant. Like, how the. Why am I kid? Why am I pregnant with Kid Rock's child? This is not how I want things to be. This is not peace between us. This is <laughs> this is strike four. Immaculate Kid Rock conception. <laughs> Take my child, like man, this blows. <laughs> <laughs> so, next for you, Daphne, you're getting a live act together. Yes, indeed. And the G is silent. Will be out. Oh, that is definitely going to be a uh, a different. That that sounds different. You heard it. It sounds very different from anything we've done. Uh, and then we're going back to the regularly scheduled uh, programming. Uh, but this song we need to have. Some, this song was uh, it came out that way, and it had the action to it. So uh, that song is all about like him doing that. So he, basically, he's at the party, and one of the people who took him prisoner when he was in Iran uh talks to him and says like you know if i if uh remember that time i put a gun to your head if up to me i would have gotten i would have gotten rid of you and so the point of that story is that like he's like poker faces it away it's like i'm not gonna react to this and the ambassador like says like listen i'm impressed i would have gone off on this guy i would have been sent home within a week but you know you you got like some I like how you were able to stone faith this. Uh, you know, why don't you go and uh, treat yourself this weekend and go uh, go to Stad? And uh, so he does go mountain climbing and he thinks about things and he thinks about like I always got to be and live in fear of these people just coming up and doing stuff like that. 
And he also uh, was like, no, of course not, because like I'm, I took some action. Before he left Rashad, he uh, filled the guy's gas tank with sugar. And uh, that's it. But they can't prove they can't prove that. This is the day before like uh, a lot of uh, everything being surveilled. So he mm. got away with that. And Just gas petty tanks, revenge. Gas tanks being locked. Y yeah. Went over to the that. Was Renault, like Phil Renault, he has put the gas, get the sugar in the gas tank. He's like, okay. And when, when is it set in? Is it set in the seventies? Late seventies. Those are set in eighty three. Oh, eighty three. Okay. It's eighty three. I, I I should really say the the name the uh the years. I think I'll do that in the next song. Okay. Because we're going to be uh, changing settings after this. Okay. Um. So what, can you run through the settings and the years of each release? Okay. We start off with Visitors in 1979. That takes place in Tehran, Iran. And uh, then we go to, with the Rockford Files, we uh, are in Washington, D.C. in 1981, early 1981 to spring. That's all, the attache also takes place around that time period. And uh, 83, we are in Bern, Switzerland. And 84, um, well, the first thing we ever release is uh, gives us gives you a very good clue of where we're going from that, Berlin. Okay. He basically impresses people enough in Berlin where they actually think like this guy is not a, a loose cannon. He you know, he keeps he keeps himself together well, and he keeps himself. So he's they uh, set him up uh, working at the consulate in West Berlin. And. So, uh, how many are all all the songs that you guys have done are with this theme? Um, right? we're gonna be doing. Oh, oh, I have some news. Um, okay. we uh, are working uh in cooperation with uh the vampire author uh, Raven Belasco, uh, to do a song for one of her books. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I can't give too much about that, but uh, we've talked about it and. Uh, we have a good enough uh, relationship where like, I know I'm going to, I'm going to go do this. So I just got to go and uh, I've gotten the details. I've gotten the parameters of what uh, I should do. And uh, cause I, 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 I told her like, like that, no, you don't want to give me creative freedom. You got to tell me exactly. Uh, <laughs> you don't know. You don't want to give me that kind of freedom. I, <laughs> you got, you got to tell me I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out, but <laughs> Give well, me that's, that's perfect because I think all of these songs are so uh, well. I, yeah, obviously they're cinematic. It's a, it's a, you're, the way you're telling the story and and uh, thank you. It's great. Uh, it's great uh, soundtrack stuff for sure. Oh yeah, no, we're we're uh, having a good time and it's good. The sound's going to change a little bit too, obviously, since we're going. Uh, some of the songs there that can be. Uh, I guess we're going to get uh, a little bit more of the. Uh, uh, Deutsche Amerikanische Freundschaft going on there. Not too much. We're not going to rip them off completely. But uh, we're going to have a little more of the uh, that, that sound from that time. Mm. A yeah. little more craft work, not too much. Okay. So the synths are coming in. Yeah. We, there's, there are synth on uh, this one, but it's actually guitar synth. I use a guitar uh, uh, synth uh, module for uh, all the synth sounds you heard on the G is silent. And... Mm. Uh, in a live setting, can you please play the synth, the guitar synth? You know, with the if we can track? do that, I would like to. Yes, uh, I, yeah, I think you would be awesome with that. I would like to do that uh, if we can get that uh, done properly, because we actually would need two guitar players for that. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, yeah, because you're playing guitar too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great addition. I'm probably well, gonna get two guitar players anyway because I don't like to play guitar and sing at the same time. It's I can do it. I just don't like doing it. Mm. I'm, okay. I, I, so you want to be you 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 just want to be up there. I think we be better for the show, yeah. and I know people who are a lot more competent on guitar than I am. Mm. I get the job done. I know people who can get the job done and then go further than me. Yeah, but you know, it's the certain character of your playing too, which is. Oh, I know a couple people who can play the stuff just as good as me, if not better. Okay. I, 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 I yeah. And they, they are more than willing to uh, lend a hand on this one. So, oh, yeah, I got yeah. this. 
Just don't lose what's special about it, you know. Oh, no, no. Dick Thunder is going to be there playing the bass. And uh, we're going to have, like, the sound there. And uh, that's why I want live drums, because it sounds good. The electronic drums sound good, recorded. For us, I think uh, just to have that dr dramatic effect, we want to have the drums there. Oh, that's going to be great. Well, I hope I get to see you guys live at some point because I think this I is going to be an well. awesome we get live to. show. We're when we do play, it is going. To, we're going to make sure it's special, even if it's just one time. We're going to make sure it's good and it's special. And uh, I think we, things are going to really take off for you guys when you when you start playing out live. I, I, I think it's going to be a an extra level of magic. Well, thank you. I mean, magic I, I want that's to. already happening. Yeah. Honestly, we feel that we are successful right now because honestly, we didn't think anyone would listen to us. We just wanted to put out some songs because yeah. we wanted That's to just, like, too, share yeah. this. So yeah. already, this is success for us. You know, like I'm a man of a certain age, I don't expect much. I expect to like just <laughs> express myself, and if someone likes it, that's cool. And yeah. the fact that uh, man of your stature is is, is interviewing me. It's amazing. I'm, 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 this is the second time I've talked to you for for uh, for this band, and I am flattered. <laughs> I am grateful. Well, I, I love so the band. Help us. If, if anybody hasn't heard you know, Diphene, go 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 and listen to it. Like I said before, it's got elements of Bauhaus and and bands of that ilk. But what I personally, what I I can't sit down. Even though I'm a huge Bauhaus fan, I can't just sit down and listen to. Bauhaus record after Bauhaus record because I feel like they intentionally become obtuse and hard to listen to. I think they mm. try to challenge you like, oh yeah, you're going to listen to this song? <laughs> would you, would you that guys- That Bill Underground doing, thing coming through. You, know, you do that for like a couple measures, but then you get back to like the pop element of the song or like a, a refrain that you want to sing along to, which I just love. Oh, thank you. I mean, like, I, yeah, we, we know when to say when on some of the things, some of the elements. <laughs> exactly. You got to know when to say when. <laughs> That's why, like, this song, by the way, this new song is is longer than uh, the other ones. Yes. Don't worry. We're not going to go into, like, 10-minute jams. The, the rest of them will be, like, three, three and a half minutes like the others. We're not, This is the our, our one self. We, we've cashed in our self-indulgence. Uh card and we're going to be going back to earning uh the listeners trust after this thank you okay. for giving us a shot well chris thank you for uh thank you for coming on the show again and everyone go listen to the attache and rewind and 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 listen to the um the, the previous songs in the story and, hey, and uh, have a great visit here yeah yeah i'm enjoying myself oh i was gonna say i think i may go down and visit renee in person he was like okay. oh we should meet in person and i was like yeah so well give me a call if you get if you're around yeah yeah, yeah i will if we, if i choose to go down there as my my high school friend she's like saying hey you know we could just hop on the old amtrak and zip right down to uh dc tomorrow great. so may, maybe i'll come tomorrow if he's free but tomorrow it would have to be tomorrow so. okay yeah well yeah, anyway but i'll, give me I'll a call. send you a message yeah okay. yeah you, i'm on the instagram come come find me have a great day. All right, Chris. Thanks. Thank Talk you. Take care, y'all.